another very beautiful morning. It is the 14th day in the month of October in 2015. Welcome to Crossfire. This is Channel 196 and Star Times. This is Cool TV. I have Ishoma Agaene in the studio with me, and we definitely will be working together as usual. Ishoma, good morning. Good How morning, are you? Good morning, countrymen, and welcome to another beautiful day. All right. It's been a very raining Wednesday, and I know that a lot of people are finding it difficult to even get to their various destinations. It took me a while to even get to work, and it took a lot of people, I mean, either work to just get to their various destinations, but notwithstanding, just take it cool. It doesn't matter what time anymore on a day like this. It just matters that you get to wherever you are going in one piece. Now, we have a very fantastic uh, package for you this morning, and then we quickly will be running it uh, because of time. Now, before we go on, we have a gentleman in our midst, and we will be narrowing down today on the internally displaced persons in Nigeria. Now, we have someone who has a very first-hand experience of what IDP camps can be. But this happened all the way in Cameroon, or a border between Cameroon and Nigeria, where we have well over 50,000 supposed Nigerians who have been displaced, and yet the Nigerian government, the Cameroonian government, have not been doing anything to ensure that life is meaningful for these people. We'll be getting details as we go on on the show. Now, but let me quickly run a couple of uh, viral news and viral stories, you know, that you might really be interested in. Now, yesterday, something really very dramatic as expected happened when the Senate actually screened about 10 nominees um, yesterday. Now, uh, it is important to quickly uh, bring you up to speed on some of the things that happened you know, at the Senate yesterday. Now, we have only 10 nominees that were screened yesterday by the Senate. They are Udoma, Udo, Udoma. We have Kaode Fayemi. We have Audu Ogbe. We have Ogbunaya Onu. We have Osage um, Eharine. That's a doctor from Edo State. And Abra, Abdul Rahman, um, yes, Dan Bazao. And then others are Alaji, um, I mean, Chief whatever you want to call him, Lai Mohammed. His case was extremely dramatic as the seen it <laughs> yesterday. And eventually, he went away with it because he took a bow and he left. Now we have one fantastic woman who dazzled everybody at the seen it yesterday, Amina Mohammed, and then we have Suleiman Adams, and then we have Ibrahim Jubrin. All this will be screened today and tomorrow. Now, the expectations that were not met yesterday were such that Rotimiya Mechi was particularly slated to be interviewed yesterday, but it could not happen because the clearance that was supposed to be given by CCB, who met with him and clarified him, I mean, a, a few days before, the report never got to the Senate. Anyway. Hopefully, we may be witnessing an Amechi being uh, screened today at the Senate. And then let me quickly run through a couple of stories um, that may interest you also. Now, on a very sad note, we have three huge explosions rock my Duguri um, yesterday. And uh, the locals and the Red Cross, I mean, witnessed that particular incident, and believe you me, lives were involved, and it was really a very devastating, um, um, you know, explosion uh, yesterday. Now, panic happened in Okeni, uh, all the way in Kogi State, as 10 people died in a gun battle. I, I mean, we don't have full report as to what really, you know, culminates into this, but uh, residents in Okeni have confirmed that there was an intense gunshot all through the night between security operatives of the Nigerian Army and fundamentalists in Okene local government area of Kogi State. Now, 10 of the fundamentals were reportedly killed, while some soldiers sustained serious injuries and were taken to the Federal Medical Center in Lokoja for treatment. Now, that's another one. Now, uh, another very quick one is to let you know that um, there was a tragedy two years after the tragic, um, you know, incident of the Nigerian Immigration um, Service recruitment. The permanent secretary of, of the Ministry of Interior, Alaji Abubakar Magaji, has disclosed the reason behind all the promises that the former president, Goodluck Jonathan, made to the families of the disease during that particular rampage in Abuja. And nothing has been done up till now. And this um, uh, Alaji uh, Abubakar Magaji came out really very strong to say the past administration promised only by mouth. There were no documentation to back all the promises they made to the family of the diseased. And that's a very, very unfortunate situation. Now, another one is the ministerial screening 
that will be happening today. Don't forget, we have fantastic candidates that will be screened today. And believe you me, it's something you don't want to miss. We have uh, Babatunde Raji Fashola coming on board. We have Rotimi Amechi coming on board. And then don't forget, we have another person who is really, um, you know, uh, very controversial. And people are looking at what will happen when eventually he came on board too. And that... Um, um, who happens to be in the second batch of the uh, list of the nominees submitted by the president, and that's the, in the 16-man list. And uh, let, let's give you this last one, and then we go ahead into uh, our major, major, major um, stories today. Now I'm doing um, a juggling in my head. Which of the stories should I pick? Which of the stories should I pick? But uh, notwithstanding, let's just go on here. Now, um, like I said, we have a very quick business to do. We have a gentleman who is in the studio with us, and is no other person uh, but someone who actually had a life you know, experience. I mean, this is a life experience. He was there, he saw it, he suffered for it, and he took the power of the social media, which we definitely will be narrowing down or talk about today on, the, on this episode, and then we definitely will you know, be on, you know, unraveling and unveiling a couple of things that are happening that Nigerians really do not know. Let's welcome Simon Ateba to our studio. Simon, good morning. You're welcome. Good morning. How are you doing Bye. today? Well. A handshake for you. You know, every time I see you, I want to give you a handshake because it's really very nice to confirm that you are still around, that you are here, that yes, um, it's the real you that, uh, you know, that we are seeing and all of that. Now, we brought Simon on the show some time ago, and that was before the release of the publication, the report that he was able to put together on IDPs, you know, in Cameroon. And, and believe you me, it's, this is a story you really want to be a part of. Now, um, Simon... Let's quickly take a background. I knew that you were funded by an organization to carry out an investigative journalism on a particular field of endeavor, and you eventually got their support, and you went. Just tell us the short story so that I will, okay. I'm very sure you know the story much more than me. Okay, I knew that there were some refugees in Cameroon, like almost 50,000 Nigerian refugees are in a camp called the Minawawo camp. And Hi, can you say that again? Minawawo. Minawawo. Yeah, Hi. Minawawo camp. Okay. It's almost 70 kilometers from the border between the Nigerian border. And is in Cameroon northeast, in, in Cameroon far north, mm -hmm. and in the northern, northeastern part of Nigeria. And I wanted to do that story because, you know, these are refugees, these are the people who needed help. And so I got a funding from the International Center for Investigative Reporting. And I got there, I got arrested, and I spent four days in, in a cell. And, but I've been able to write the report, and the report was published in the Nation newspaper some, a couple of days ago. Why were you arrested, Sam? Let's, uh, I mean, let's just put it in perspective. Yeah, Why were you arrested? I was arrested because they, they said I didn't have the proper permit to... To carry out your... To, I mean, to do a report yeah, on... To, to, to enter the refugee camp. And, and so they thought there was a Boko Haram spy, and they had to interview me, interrogate me. The state security service, they asked me questions several times, are you a spy for Boko Haram? I said, no. So you are not a spy for Boko Haram? I said, no. I'm not a spy for Boko Haram, ISIS, or any other terror organization. So the, that was it. But you know, I was freed after four days, after being detained for three nights and a day. And I came back and I did my report about the... No, but if you were arrested, how were you able to see the camp? You know, did you have ample time to speak with the people, to see the, the, the camp and all of that? Okay, to be honest, I mean, this is not the report that I really wanted to do. Okay. How does it work when you enter a refugee camp? You talk to those people, you ask them uh, about their own life. So they'll be telling their own story. Yeah. You don't... You, you, Really, you don't need to do much. What you should do, ask them. You know, they will be telling their own stories. But when you are arrested, there are a lot of things that I could have done that I couldn't do. Mm -hmm. uh, I was able to enter the camp. and uh, Before your arrest? Before my arrest. So I was able to take some pictures and yeah. talk to just a few people, and then the gendarme, and then the people around. But of course, it's not 
an elaborate, total, complete story. But before going to the camp, I've spoken to so many people. I've gone to the United Nations Agency for Refugees. I've spoken to local journalists. I've spoken to authorities. I've even sought permission from the governor, the ministers. I mean, everybody around, and they, they couldn't give me the permission. So I decided to at least go and see the camp. It wasn't as if I really wanted to go inside the camp without the permit. Now, how did you eventually get into the camp to even have access? How, how did you, you get you know, I thought, I mean, when you hear that there's a camp somewhere, what do you expect? You expect Borders, gates, every gate, security to have security, security, you know, to be security to have gate, a fence, yeah. at yeah. least to have yeah. a fence. And, and I didn't know that that camp was deep in the bush, seven kilometers from the nearest star road. So I thought is, is a place where you just go and then at least let me see the camp. How can I go and do a story on refugees? And I don't even see them. And I come back and I've gotten money to go and do that story. And how will I come and tell them? I went to Cameroon. I spoke to everybody except the people that I came to do a story right. about. So I decided to go and see it. And at least let me have a view of the camp, see how they live. Only for me to get there first. Uh, it rained on that day, so the few gendarmes who were supposed to be at, you know, before the camp were not there. And so the bike man drove me straight inside into the, the, into the camp. Unchecked? Unchecked. And I took, I mean, it could, it means anybody can do it, even Boko Haram can do it. I mean, because there's no you were not stopped by any, no, no stop any by individual anybody. or group no, no. of... Um, Until when I was in the camp. Wow. You know, so how did they how did they track you? I mean, were you tracked? Were you spotted? How did yeah, they single spotted. you out? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, okay. Yeah, you, you know, I mean, who are the people in the camp? There are like more than twenty organization. You have uh, Médecins Sans Frontières. You have the Doctors Without Borders. You have Red yeah. Cross. You have like twenty or twenty okay. something organization, and they seem to know those people because they come in jeep. The road is extremely bad. I mean. Cars break down there. Maybe I don't know if you are going to have the. Yeah, we're going to, to be you know, having footage mm, and, and all of that. Yeah, to see some of those pictures. The road to that place is in a, in a pathetic state, and and so they they all drive jeep. They have. Uh, I mean, you can recognize them. And they saw me. I was on a bike, and I was already drenched because the the rain was heavy on that day. And a gendarme came to me. Said, hey, "This is the first time I'm seeing you here." I said, "Yes." He said. Uh, so why are you here for? I tried to give him <laughs> some excuses. <laughs> some or excuses, so. but I'm not sure he really bought it. But eventually, I found my way. I said that I needed tea, and they said the tea is there. So I had to quickly go around the camp, try to see people who are those refugees. Let me take their picture. Let me take the pictures of the camp. Even if you are not going to have the time to talk to everybody, to everybody around, but at least you are there. You are seeing that camp. You are taking pictures, faces of people who are there. And I also told the guy that I had some clothes, which was true. I, I had some shirt, T-shirt. Yeah, you were going to give to yeah, the... I was going to give to the kids. They say, okay, give them the shirt. I don't know if it's the procedure, because the procedure says, if you won't give anything to that camp, you, you, you need to go to the governor, we go to the mayor, we go to the gendarme, and those people will go to the United Nations Agency for Refugee. Is to it, give, just it's to a give, long I mean, what's the assurance that the gifts will eventually get to those children? Uh, yeah, b because they trust the UN agency. I mean, exactly. it may not get to the children, but we get to someone. Some, yeah. But, wow. but I just had four, four clothes. I wanted to give them to, I mean, the first four kids that we see. Mm. And if we get to see the pictures. We'll see the pictures. Yeah, you, you're going to see me with, you know, those kids. and, But the main thing, I don't know if we are talking about it yet, but the main thing is that those people really need our assistance. Mm. We need to come to the rescue of those people. They yeah, just, just trying to lay, you know, a foundation for it. Now, on what basis, when eventually, uh, how were you arrested? I mean, you, you met with one of them who allowed you to still go get tea, take some pictures and all uh, of that. Actually, the, the, I mean, it would be technically wrong to say that he allowed me. Let's say I almost outsmarted him and finally mm. I was able to take pictures and say a few things to people who were there because I wanted to have a view of the camp. I mean... If you send me to go and do a story on refugees, what do you want? 
I need pictures. I need. Uh, I mean, I, I need pictures to tell the stories. Even, Let me put yes, it that way. Even video footages and audio messages. Pictures tell stories. Just and then you won't see the faces of those people. Like they, and then you won't try to talk to them. Try to speak English. French, okay. Like, I mean, talk about pictures. Let's start. Um, I mean, getting to talk on some of them to bring the story more alive. And so um, you will see some pictures coming on the screen. And this is a picture, you know, depicting the situation exactly what the camp looks like the refugee camp looks like and um, I mean Simon you definitely will just be talking over those pictures as we bring them okay. on okay. yeah we have some of them coming up now okay this is this the road this is the road that leads to the camp this is wow. the camp I wish the cool this is the camp yeah this is the camp I wish the cool stabilize them a bit maybe make them bigger okay but there's a woman she was with a kid and the kid was just staring at me as I was trying to take the picture. So she was telling the kid, come, come, come. And maybe she, she was scared. Okay. And uh, this is the camp. This is what the camp looks this like. Is what the I camp mean, that's just like. tarpaulin covering. That, that's me with the kids. With the kids you know, in one, one of the, the tents. Yes, one of the tents. So I gave them this clothes. I took so this, this is a typical, um, is this for relaxation or this is where they live? The, 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 okay, this particular place is where they sell tea because I don't know how they got the tea there. I don't know how they get the drinks there. I don't know, but you know, there, there are, are loads of transactions going on in the transaction camp. Yeah, because I saw one of, when, when I, you know, by the time I, I read your report, I saw a picture showing, depicting a woman who was frying bean cakes as Akara. Yeah, okay, so that yes. means, do they have some of these you know, facilities there for them to trade. That means they, they seem to be doing and business. If, There's if, money if on the If people are buying I mean, and selling, and then, so how do I'm, they I'm, get money? I mean, even me, I was a bit flabbergasted because, I mean, how do they get money to buy it? I, I don't know. I and do business in the And camp. do business. And some people, I bought, for instance, I paid for the tea, and mm. I gave them 100 francs for a small cup. That's like 35 naira. And I also gave the tea to the men that you see there. Mm. They did because it was, you know, it was very cold on that day. Okay, now let, let, let's start, I mean, before we go on our first break, let's start talking. How would you describe the camp? What is the camp like? First of all, tell us what's the, consti I mean, the constituent of the camp. Who are the people present there? Okay, uh, first you have about 50,000 people. All right. 96% of those people come from Borno State. 96% from Borno State. State. At least that's what the officials, they are telling me. Okay. 2% of those people come from Adamawa State, and 2% of them come from anywhere. Jay, Chad, Cameroon. <laughs> I don't know where, but I mean, it's not specific. <laughs> and, and it's very possible it that 100% is, is actually, I mean, could be Nigerians. Yes, it's possible. Okay. Because, you know, when you get to the camp, they check. First, the people in that place, in Cameroon, far north, they speak French and they speak Fufu. They, their local language. Uh, they are also, uh, most of them are Muslim. But these people who they come to they the speak camp, French? They speak French. And then the Fufude is a local language. Local language. Yeah. And that's the language of transaction, business. Yeah. But, but most people who come from Nigeria, they don't speak French. They don't they speak, speak the Fufude. Fufude. Most, so they most, speak Hausa. Most of them speak Hausa. So when you come, you don't speak Hausa. You don't speak their French. don't speak their Fufude. And then Once you speak you, outside, you see a lot okay, of people so associating with you. They, they, they already know that those people, they are not from there. And you know, that place is actually very... Listen, when you get to the border, I wasn't very far from the border, you can actually cross. There are places where you pass and then you see Nigeria on the other side. They actually show you that that place, that's where they kidnap. French people and they took them to Nigeria. So and there's no it, security presence along the border. No, but I mean, how will you have security? There are 400 kilometer border where that war, that insurgency is taking place. And and you, you know the the multinational joint task force. I mean, how many of them? 8,700. Where will they be? Their headquarters is in Jamena in Chad. What's the border between Chad and Nigeria? Very small. I mean, Lake Chad, the biggest border between. Where uh, the the lake the lake Chad basin, yeah. where you have the insurgency, is between Cameroon and Nigeria. Both countries share one thousand six hundred kilometer border. But where the insurgency is taking place is almost four hundred kilometer. I mean, how many soldiers will you put there? Where are they? I mean, 
So it, does it, that mean that Nigeria cannot win the war against terrorism no, soon with this huge lapse you just mentioned? Yeah, no, no. I mean, I mean, all, all you can do is to have adequate intelligence to know that these people are here because it's so, you know, it's, it's, I mean, what's, what's the size So is it between Cameroon and Nigeria? Cameroon and Nigeria, that's where you have the longest border. When you hear they kill people in Fotokol, that's in Cameroon, right in front of Fotokol, that's where you have, uh, I mean, it's, it's very close. All right. Okay, so, now let's go on a short break now when we come back. Simon Ateba will still be in the studio and we'll bring you more stories on the internally displaced persons in Nigeria and particularly the refugee camp between Cameroon and Nigeria. We'll be right back. So, did you like what you just saw? I know you did. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. If you want to see more, just subscribe to our channel right now.